This is a story about an inspirational little girl named Hannah Warren and the compassionate group of people who came together from around the world to help her and her family. Hannah Warren was born on August 22, 2010 at Seoul University Hospital in South Korea. When she was born, she was blue. Her doctors immediately inserted a tube down her throat and into her lungs to create an airway so she could breathe. Shortly after her birth, Hannah was diagnosed with a rare, fatal condition called tracheal agenesis, meaning only part of her trachea had developed. Hannah would not be able to survive without a tube in her throat to help her breathe. Hannah's mother, Young Me, and father, Daryl, were expected to take home a healthy baby girl. Instead, they were told that Hannah would only live for one to two months, and she would never be able to leave the hospital. Daryl and Young Me were devastated. What was supposed to be one of the best days of their lives had turned into a parent's worst nightmare. There seemed to be no hope for Hannah. Most people cannot handle a breathing tube, unless they are sedated or asleep. Hannah had to live with it all day, every day. Hannah's father said the tube kept her alive, but it also made her a prisoner of the hospital. Nurses had to clean the tube using suction every half hour to two hours. Hannah bravely endured the painful suctioning process at least 20 times per day and 20 times per night. Her perseverance was beyond remarkable and did not go unnoticed. Lindsay Son, a pediatric nurse from Chicago, visited Seoul University Hospital to teach a class in the neonatal unit where Hannah was living. When Lindsay met Hannah, Hannah was seven weeks old. The little girl who had no hope had surpassed her short life expectancy. Lindsay said that Hannah was a remarkable child. Hannah could recognize when the nurses were not busy and would beckon them to come and play with her. No one could resist Hannah. There was so much life in Hannah. Everyone who encountered her loved her. The nurses even knitted little hats and booties for her. Hannah loved the color yellow. Everything bright and yellow would make her light up with a smile. Yellow lollipops were her favorite. Interestingly, yellow represents hope. Lindsay felt herself drawn to Hannah and decided that no hope was not acceptable. She encouraged her colleague, Mark Holterman, a pediatric surgeon from Chicago, to find a way to save this special little girl. In April 2011, Dr. Holterman reached out with an urgent email to a thoracic surgeon in Italy, Paolo Macchiarini, MD, PhD, who was having some success in developing tracheas using patients' own adult stem cells. Dr. Macchiarini reviewed Hannah's case and responded within six hours of receiving Dr. Holterman's email. Since it was such a serious case, he did not want to waste time in determining if there was anything that could help little Hannah. Dr. Macchiarini said, a patient in her condition who is still alive wants to be alive, and we must do what we can to help her. When asked why he would take on such a personal risk in performing an experimental procedure, Paolo Macchiarini answered, as a human and as a doctor, are we allowed to say no? I don't think so. There are no other options. If we do nothing, Hannah will surely die. With cell therapy, there is a little hope. This newfound hope excited Hannah's family. However, there were still a lot of obstacles to overcome. The cost of surgery was daunting and was far too expensive for Hannah's parents to afford. Another obstacle was finding a facility that would agree to host the procedure. There were ethical concerns about the procedure because no large-scale trial had been completed to prove its safety and efficacy. Since these were Hannah's cells from her own body, 
Dr. Holterman knew as a Christian, a father, and a doctor that the only ethical option was to try to save a life, a life that clearly wanted to live. Dr. Holterman and Dr. Macchiarini spent 18 months trying to find a hospital that would allow such a procedure. It was earlier in the cell therapy industry, and growing organs was, and still is, considered experimental. Hannah, meanwhile, had passed the two-year mark. Against all odds, she had outgrown the neonatal floor, but the hospital supplied her with a new bed and continued to raise her in the neonatal wing of the hospital that had become her new home. Hannah was flourishing spiritually, but not physically. Her body was getting weaker every day. Several times she came close to death. Despite the scary and painful experiences she endured, Hannah's parents and her medical team marveled at how joyful and positive she seemed to be. She had a smile on her face every day. The worldwide search ended in Illinois when Children's Hospital of Illinois agreed to the procedure and paid for most of the cost. The long wait was finally over. After beating the odds by living two and a half years, Hannah, her parents, and a team of nurses flew 13 hours to the United States as the medical team assembled to operate. Hannah's new trachea was implanted successfully. Only four days after the surgery, the stem cells were already transforming into airway cells. Hannah's parents were relieved that the stem cell therapy was a success. Hannah was able to taste a lollipop for the first time in her life. Hannah and her family celebrated. However, Hannah's young body had endured so much while waiting for approval to receive a trachea transplant. Three months after her surgery, she passed away due to complications unrelated to the stem cell therapy. Dr. Holterman, who had become Hannah's godfather, felt like he had lost one of his own children. Young me and Daryl Warren recognized Dr. Holterman and Dr. Macchiarini's grief and encouraged them to continue to pioneer in cell therapy, saying, although the outcome was tragic, it was a heroic attempt. Hannah and the doctors who cared for her helped advance the field of regenerative medicine. Other children and adults will benefit from the knowledge that was gained and the technology that was created. Hannah's indelible spirit lives on in our memories. Her small and joyful life inspired all who met her. And her parents have chosen to join with the Alliance for the Advancement of Cellular Therapies to create the Hannah's Hope Fund as a tribute to her courage and the hope that stem cell therapies may provide to other patients. Through Hannah's example, we can begin to see a world where regenerative medicine is instrumental in treating even the most challenging conditions. Regenerative medicine's technological advances have outpaced the FDA's ability to stay current. ACT has positioned itself to work with regulatory authorities to give patients access to regenerative medicine. Hannah's hope will drive the national dialogue and will work to provide opportunities for patients to receive treatments before it's too late.